actively hunt people down who interfere with our game and break our rules, and we will uh, eject them from our game permanently if they want to break those rules. We do that consistently in Dark Age of Camelot. We don't make a big deal out of it, but we will do it in Warhammer also. Um, if you break our rules, we will and we can identify you and we'll find you and kick you out of our game. Best answer I have. <laughs> I'm half asleep, sorry. More questions? It was said a long time ago that when game developments, um, more players will get bigger, more players will have players getting longer. Uh, Why is it exist now? Who said players? that? <laughs> from our game permanently if they want to break those rules. We do that consistently in Dark Age of Camelot. We don't make a big deal out of it, but we will do it in Warhammer also. Um, if you break our rules, we will, and we can, identify you, and we'll find you and keep you out of our game. Best answer I have. <laughs> I'm half asleep, sorry. More questions? It was said a long time ago that when game developments um, more players will get bigger, more players will have players getting longer. Uh, Why is it exist now? Who said players? that? <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> I did, actually. I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know where we're at on that? Yeah, what's the final word? Yeah. Yeah. So, we've always really wanted to do that. We have a plan for that um, as far as how we can change every single... Uh, race in the game as they progress. And, and I can tell you what... Uh, uh, should I even bring that up? So, the reason I call it a plan is because that's all it is right now. It is one of the edge case pieces that um, we still talk about lovingly, that we still really want to do, but is very doubtful that we'll get to do it. It's one of those things that um, is not critical to the success of the game, and therefore kind of teeters on the edge of, oh, that's cut. Um, but it hasn't been cut. We still talk about it. Um, but uh, if I had to guess, I'd say there's a 25% chance that we'll do that before the game launches. Um, we do have some really cool plans around it as far as Stunty's beard growing longer, orcs getting bigger, um, uh, uh, different things with different classes as far as... And, and these are things like uh, when you get to a certain point as you level up, you get a choice... So if you don't want you to change, like some people wouldn't want a dwarf. They're like, I, I like my dwarf with a short beard. I don't want his beard to grow longer. So we would give the player a choice. Level 10, you have a choice. You can go and make your beard longer if you want. Um, uh, and we have lots of different choices, like maybe the Chaos Guy's eyes glow. You know, it's, it's different things that you can do to show change on your character as you level up. Um, but I think that there's, a, a, again, a 75% chance that that will not happen in-game. Okay, I wish we could. We really would like to do it. We have a great plan for it. Like, we have a spreadsheet of everything that everybody would do at what level, and it's cool as hell. But it's also a lot of work, so probably not. Do crafted items uh, have high levels in world tournaments? What do you mean? Well, if you craft an item, would it be better than if you get something from a uh, an encounter? Mm. In some cases, yes. Like there are, I don't know how to answer the question. In, uh, like, are there crafted items that are better than world drops? Absolutely. Um, they're very comparable. I would say that that uh, depending upon who you are and what you want to do, crafted items right now are generally different types of items. So I wouldn't call them better, I'd call them different. Can you tell more about crafting? No. No? <laughs> One of those items that Mr. Why not? Mark Jacobs said specifically that he's not ready to unveil that information. And he requested that I not talk about it. I don't want to get punched in the face by a man. <laughs> <clears throat> I can tell you that the crafting that we've got right now in game, we're testing it right now in beta, um, we're testing three gathering systems and one crafting system right now in beta. Um, and they're really cool. Like, there's some really cool stuff that we're doing. That's all I'm going to say.
questions? Oh, please. Well, All right, go for yeah. it. Regarding Monza. Yeah, uh, you want uh, Sean the dwarf uh, here field in a chariot. Which hand plays the most of the community? Uh, I guess uh, some of our CMP can test it. Have you changed your mind about it? or? Have we changed our mind about the Dwarven Mount? Yeah. <laughs> or you still go with that uh, BFU chariot? How do I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have decided mounts for every single for every single race in the game, except Dwarves. Um, we concepted up and actually did a mock-up build of the Dwarven mechanical chariot um, in the game, and I was displeased with how it looked. Um, we think we have a really good idea for what the Dwarven Mount should be. We think that it's going to be something different. I can't guarantee that, um, and I can't tell you what it is. Like, the reason I'm laughing is there are literally emails this week talking about this subject. It's one of the hot topics right now on the development team because everybody feels the same way. They're kind of looking at it and going, well, maybe we can make the mechanical you know, the mechanical mount, the mechanical chariot for the dwarves look really cool, and maybe we do this, maybe we do that. A lot of discussion going on. Um, I think that we might move away from that, but I don't, I don't have any more information for you beyond that. So it's a, it's a great question. You're right on top of it, because there are a lot of us who felt the same way. Okay. That's a, it's a sticky point, because Games Workshop dwarves are so... Um, there's very specific lore about what dwarves would ride and what dwarves wouldn't ride. Uh, and Games Workshop is very adamant about it, and therefore we are. So um, finding just the right mount for dwarves is a definitely a difficult process. We'll get there. Uh, will there be a clear definition between a class being all about and a class and um, players <coughs> of skill when it comes to actually combining some There's a definition. <laughs> Meaning that if you get a lot of people that, oh, this class is hard to play, uh, but it's generally because they suck. <laughs> um, <coughs> because that happens uh, a lot in more with things like that. Uh -huh. When you go to class, and it's, people just don't realize how to actually play it, and then they all do it, and then all of a sudden it's so powerful, especially for the players that can actually play that class. Wow. So, um, we balance. We, it, uh, let's, let me take a step back. Not even balance. We change the game and we make modifications to the game based upon a lot of different criteria. One of those criteria is listening to player feedback. We, I think you guys have all seen that, um, and if you haven't, I'll tell you, uh, we go out and we read our forums, we have our own forums, we talk to our players, we have um, kind of a special inner council of players that are very trusted that we listen to very closely, as well as our standard beta testers. Um, we really rely on that, but that's only one aspect of the data that we gather to determine anything about the game, whether it be class balance, whether it be XP curve, whether it be where they're having fun, where they're not having fun, whatever it is. Um, so listening to the players, reading the boards, or whatever you want to call it, um, is just one data point for us. We have an amazing amount of metrics. Like our metric system is, I wish we had something like this when we built Camelot seven years ago. Like, we can tell anything and everything about the game, um, and, and I can, at the touch of a button, tell you exactly how much damage a class is putting out, how, how often they're dying, how often they're winning, how often they're losing. Like, I can tell you with 100% certainty whether a class is not balanced or not, um, or weak, underpowered, overpowered, whatever it is. I can tell you who's winning and who's losing in every single fight in the game, whether it's versus players or versus monsters. So that's one other data point that we use. Another data point that we use is we all play, and we play a lot. Um, and we play every single class out there. So um, we have people in the company who, um, multiple people that we trust per career, to tell us, well, what do you think? Is you know, is this class overpowered, underpowered? How are you playing? You know, are you a good player or a bad player? And we're pretty open with with each other about, you know, I'm not really an RVR player. I get killed a lot, you know. So uh, we take all of those data points and more and apply them before we make any decision. So um, I. 